Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 There is a name that is precious. There is a name that means the world to me. There is a name that comes all my peace because of that name. I have the victory And when I call on that name It brings healing The name comforts my weary soul The name That is precious. There is a name that means the world to me. There is a name that comes all my fears because of that name. I have the victory. And when I call on that name, it brings healing. The name, oh yes, comforts my weary soul. The name. Come on, yes. In the name of Yahoo. 
that Yahuwah is doing for me. I count it as a blessing to be the light. I could have been sleeping in my grave a long time ago. But Yahuwah, he intervened for me to stay a while longer. Oh, when I think about all the things that Yahuwah is doing for me. I count it as a blessing okay, okay. to be alive. Hallelujah. 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 All right. We're continuing with the family circle. And we're, uh, we're at number six. Number yeah. six. You already got the book in your hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It says, laziness is strongly condemned in the scriptures. Therefore, so as far as possible, a man should work for his living and provide for his wife and family. Mm -hmm. Must provide for his wife and family. And the key thing what people must understand, especially a lot of um, women and stuff, they be looking, you know, to be wine, dine, and the stuff that America gave them or the West gave them about, um, um, oh, I forgot, oh, romance or whatever. But the scriptures say to provide what? What's the necessities that must be provided? A roof over their head, clothes on their back, and food in their belly. That's his main duty right there and stuff. If you ever get some extra stuff for our vehicle or whatever, but that's the main duty. And and that right there should bring joy to your heart and stuff. Because number one, he, he, he's providing everything for you and stuff. For you and the children and everything. But sometimes some people, you know, they want more and more and more and this and that. Oh, you ain't doing this. Oh, you ain't doing that. But they're missing the very important part and stuff. So we're gonna go to we're gonna go to mission Proverbs the sixth chapter. So we got the sixth and the ninth verse, which are the key verse. So we'll read six through nine. Huh? Six through nine. Yeah. So those are the key verses. Okay, six and nine, right? Six and nine is the key verse, but we're gonna read, read through six through nine. Okay, can you know? All right. It says, go to the ant. You slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. Hmm. Which having no chief, overseer, or ruler, hmm. provides her bread in the summer and gather her food 
in the harvest. How long will you sleep, O slugger? When will you arise out of your sleep? So, key verse six, go to the ant, you slugger. Consider her way and be wise. So go learn. Learn to see what the, what the insect is doing. And then they say in the ninth verse, how long will you sleep, O slugger? When will you arise out of your sleep? So that's why the scriptures say, a man that don't work, don't eat. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So you know, a lot of people like to twist the word up, you know, for you to have so much sympathy. Oh, this, what, what about this? And that? You young, strong, and healthy. Hey, you better bend them knees and that back and get to work mm -hmm. instead of louching and slouching off, off of people and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to help somebody that's trying to help themselves, but one that's just there doing nothing. And we just want to beg and live live off your hard work, off your blood and sweat and, and tears. No, 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 no. So you was already showing you that he condemns it. He hates a, a slowful person. So he say, go watch. Look, they ain't got no boss. But yet, you see what they're doing. They, they getting their stuff together. Mm -hmm. They're collecting their food. They need to do what they need to do to survive. It's all about surviving. Surviving ain't about you lynching off of some surviving off of somebody else's hard work, off of what somebody else done, you know, contribute. They done went through all their trials and tribulations to get where they at, and you want to steal, rob, or you want to beg all the time, you want to do this. No, that ain't how it works. So we see. We got laid back. Right. And, and, and they're laid back, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. After you, they, they, and I see a lot of them on, on the roadside. I mean, uh, every organ that's working, the legs and the limbs and the eye that the see, they can hear. And there's no defect that, you know, in, 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 in their body parts, you know what I'm saying? After, you know, mm -hmm. and they think you're supposed to be a star for them, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and give you give your work, you know, your money you work hard for and stuff like that. Yeah. That, that, that was a good example there. Mm hmm. And yep. they be out there looking pitiful, dirty, you know, and dirty, and, 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 and looking, you know, pitiful out there, you know, and like you hope to, you know, have some compassion mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, you, know, you got, yeah, you got to be. Right, so you got to be wise in all your giving. You know, people try to, you know, use those scriptures, oh, it's better to give than receive. But you know what, when you want to give, actually who, who you should give to and who not to give to. See, that's the wisdom, right, that who to give to and who not to give to, because some that you don't supposed to be giving to. There's some people going through what they're going through for a reason. So you got that which you who is testing someone to go through what he's going through. You don't want to get in the way with that. And then you got those that's dealing with another spiritual battle of the enemy and stuff. And them the ones you will pray for. But still, you have to um, be wise in your giving. All right, let's go to Proverbs, Mishul, um, the 20th chapter. The 20th chapter and the um, fourth verse. But we're going to start at the first. We're going to read from one through four. All right. So we're going to read um, one through four. Four and being the key verse. It says, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is rage, riotous. Or well, some may say raging. And whosoever reels thereby is not wise. Or whoever is deceived. So in other words, it's letting you know when you become real or deceived, it's letting you know you don't let it make you become a drunker. That's what it's talking about. It ain't saying that you couldn't have it. It's saying whoever is deceived or who, whosoever reals them thereby is not wise. So in other words, you, you should know, you know your limits with a stop at and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's why it lets you know that wine is a mocking strong drink. It's riotous and stuff. So in other words, it's letting you know, hey, that what you don't have, it's mocking you. That wine don't mock you, the strong drink that made you ride it. So it, in other words, it shows uh, like a stamp. It put a stamp on you when you let it re re reel, reel you in or, you know, deceive you and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so and that's the pro and that's the issue with it. That's why you, why you think when you go to a, to a liquor store now, now, you know, they use, you know, for, for a while they've been using the word, what they say, wine, beer, and spirits. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
See, that's the key thing right there. Wine, beer, and spirits and stuff. So that's what you have to be very careful of. And that's, and that's what it's talking about. And it says, the terror of a king is as the roaring of a lion. He that provokes him to anger forfeits his life. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yes, See? Awesome. Mm. Mm. It, it is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife. But every fool will be snarling. Hmm. See there? It says what? It is an honor for a man to keep a look from strife. Mm -hmm. Avoid it. Mm -hmm. You know, keep silence. You know, do that. Be wise in all, you know, all you're doing. Yeah. It says four. The slugger, the lazy one, the slowful one will not plow when the winter sets in. Mm -hmm. Therefore, he shall beg and harvest and have nothing. Mm -hmm. See that? He ain't do nothing. He ain't prepared for the winter. He was lazy, slowful, hanging around, just laying back, waiting, waiting to be able to get something from somebody else that done did all the hard work and stuff. And the scripture says what? Therefore, he shall beg and harvest and what? Have nothing. He gonna be begging and begging and begging. He ain't gonna have nothing. See, see, those are the ones that will always that will suck you dry. You know, they will take advantage of your kindness. That's why you gotta know when to give and when not to give. Mm -hmm. Anyone had anything to say? There's always open discussion too. All right, so let's go to um, Thessalonians, the third chapter. Thessalonians, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. first Thessalonians? Oh, second Thessalonians. Second. Thessalonians. second. All right, Second Thessalonians. All right, so we're going to, um, I key verse 10 through 12, but we're going to start at verse 7. Seven yeah, so we're going to read from 7 to 12. All right. So starting at the 7th verse. For you know how it is right to be imitators of us. For we did not walk wickedly among you. So in other words, he let you know that Shaul said, hey, you can walk, you know, you know how it is right to be imitators of us. And the reason why it goes back to when he when he said, follow me as I follow Yahushua. So in other words, what he tell you, if he ain't following Yahushua, don't follow him. We always have that example of somebody, you know, and people follow those people, whether they living right or living wrong or doing whatever they're doing. Somebody always follow, imitating after somebody else and stuff. So, but in this, we're talking about the imitation of righteousness. So he says, for you know how it is right to be imitators of us. For we did not walk wickedly among you. So in other words, he's saying we said that we said a right example. Because you walk with us, you've seen the life that we live. So if you're gonna imitate something, you imitate that. He says in eight verse, neither did we eat bread without cost from any man from you. See, he said, hey, we didn't we didn't eat free. In other words, he let you know that they labor for theirs, which is to say right here in the next part. But with labor and with weariness by night and by day, we work. We work. We earn our keep. We, own, we earn our bread, our food, our drink. That we should not put a brother in, I mean a burden on any man from you. See that? 
they you go. They show you. See it. I don't see it. Yeah, the right state of mind. They made sure they hadn't become a burden to none of the brethren. They worked to earn their keep, no matter what it was. I mean, it could have been the smallest thing. They could have been, you know, cleaning up in the house, doing something in the yard. But they were showing that, hey, they, they didn't become a burden. They just wasn't, you know, freeloading and this and that and stuff. So this is the example that has been set. So that shows you they're not what sluggers or slowful people and stuff, which you who condemns. Ninth, ninth verse. He says, not because we are without authority. You know, they didn't take advantage of their authority and stuff as apostles. He said, but, but that in ourselves, we might give you an example that you might imitate us. Hmm. See, and that's the life that we both live, a life to imitate. So we got to make sure the life we live in is right because we don't want nobody imitating the bad, the bad thing of us. We want them to imitate the good thing. So we got to watch out how we live. And that's what he said. He said, hey, we did this for an example, how you should carry yourself, how you should co conduct yourself. It says in the, in the um in the um tenth verse it says and even while we were with you we we condemn we commanded you this that all who do not want to work should also not eat hmm that part right there. You work and then we hit that again. You hit that again. I was don't work, don't eat. Mm -hmm. And even while we were with you, we commanded you this. We commanded you this that all who do not want to work should not eat. Hmm. That's, the, that's what the word says. That's right. That's the word. That's the word. It's in the word. In the word. In the word. <laughs> And they set some pretty good examples there too, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, I mean, you know, it, it, it's like some righteous examples they set there, you know what I'm saying? And, and you see they, and, 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 they, and, they, and, and they had their authorities there too set, you know, and you know, they imitate, you know, they don't want right. to set no bad examples, you know, for people to follow and stuff. Right, there, that, that, part. Man, that part, that part. They really laid down some good, you know, authority there, you know what I'm saying? They set some good examples. If not anybody. All right, for sure. So 11th verse, it says, For we hear that there are men among you who walk wickedly and are not doing anything except vain things. Being a busybody. Hmm. Hmm. Walking wickedly, doing vain things, doing everything but the work. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It says in the 12th. Number eight was a pretty good verse too. You say, Lord, in my mind said, nor did we eat anyone's bread with our hands for it. You That's know, right. They, you know, they, they, yeah. they, they, so they had, you know, they had to work for they earn it. They get they earn it. They work for it, but work with right. labor. They say they work with labor. Mm -hmm. Tore, they tore at night mm -hmm. and day. So they right. put in the work. You know, what I'm saying? Oh, you can see the example. They put in the work. You know, what I'm saying. Right. Order, so, so this. So they, 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 you know, so they, they, what they got, you know, it wasn't off nobody else back, you know, and, 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 and hands, you know what I'm saying? So they, so they, so they got, they, they, they put in their own labor, mm -hmm. you know, to get their bread. So, and that's the key, and that's the thing why he did that, because like he said in the ninth verse, they did it without flexing their authority. They ain't did it because they was apostles and they had this certain position and they walked with Yahushua. No, they were showing a prime example. And that's, this right here should be an example for these preachers, these pastors, these teachers, the evangelists, and whoever other, and whatever type of leadership that, that they is, that they should come down, that they should humble themselves like Yahushua did and stuff, and become a servant themselves. Well, he said, he that is greater, let him serve. So these, so these pastors and evangelists and overseers and all, they should be serving. They be, should, should be serving. But here you see that they said that they did it and they didn't flex their authority. They was no different. In other words, they showed themselves no different than their brother. They wasn't no higher or no lower and stuff. They were showing them that, hey, we're laborers as well as you and stuff. 
came there for sure. Uh, they came down to labor and service. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. What themselves got to humble themselves. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like they came down, you know, to service. You know right. Mm -hmm. It says in the 12th verse, Now to those we command and we entreat them by our master, our Adon, Yahushua HaMashiach, that we work in quietness and eat their bread. So you, you're doing the work without fame. You're doing it without fame, without showing off and this and that. He say, do it in quietness and eat your bread. <laughs> that was sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Anyone else? That's a prime example there. Uh, that's a mm -hmm. prime. That's a prime example there. Okay, if not, we're gonna go to number seven. Okay, uh, uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, let's go to number seven. It says, it, "Oh, go ahead." Huh? First Timothy. Oh, I missed one. Oh, let me go back. Let me go back. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. All right, First Timothy, fifth chapter, y'all. First Timothy, fifth chapter. Thank you for catching that. All right, let me get that first. Okay, okay. All right, so we had um. Mm -hmm. That's so First Timothy, Timothy's a lot. First Timothy, the um, fifth chapter, in the eighth verse. Check it out. Say, for if there is a man who does not take care of those who are his own and especially of those who are of the sons of the house of faith this one has denied the faith and is more evil than those who do not believe mm, mm, mm. father have mercy you can't get hey, you can't get no harder and deeper than that if you don't take care of your own and especially the household of faith, Israel itself, your brother and sister. That's why I say, my brother's keeper. You got to be your brother's keeper. He's, he said, see, that's, so you got more scriptures telling you, you know, you're worse than the infidel, you're worse than the unbeliever. And that's what it's saying again. Mm -hmm. That what? This one has denied, you have denied the faith not to take care of your own and the household of faith. And is more e say you are more evil than an unbeliever. Mm. Hey, you can't get no worse than that. <laughs> he put you on a whole nother level, a whole nother category. Mm. Excuse me. Wow. That's 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 tight. Mm. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And this is what the family circle is all about. We all have a duty from the man to the woman to the children. We have a duty. And serving the most high you. I don't care how much you go to Bible study, how much you go to Shabbat lesson, how much you sing, how much you shout, how much you pray, how much you fast. But if you ain't doing the, these duties, that's all in vain. That's all in vain. You just going through the motion. That's why you who should say during that time. Oh, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. Say I don't know you. You was a worker of iniquity. <laughs> You got a house on the field, too, brother. You got a house on the field, too, brother. Hmm. You, you can't deny the freedom. You can't That's right. The thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little thing to do that means so much. You know, oh, yeah. For real. You were serious about that. Mm -hmm. I only seen one time and when Yahuwah had told them that they can um, cut the children loose and the wife loose. And that was because of their disobedience. And that was the only time he um, even gave that authority to cut them loose because they was um, they was um, disobedient. Mm -hmm. He told them to leave them the wife and the children because y'all wasn't supposed to marry that nation of people. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, number seven, y'all. It says, it is the responsibility of both parents 
particularly the fathers, to train their children to be citizens of work. Citizens of work. Juvenile delinquents, see, a major cause of concern these days would be a rare thing indeed if fathers followed Yahuwah's instruction concerning the rearing of their children. Amen. Listed below are some guidelines as to why and how this should be done. See, that's, and, and we know that's a big part of it, that the fathers are not in the house. The women, I don't care how much you try, you can never replace that father. You can never be like some say, oh, our, our father, our father and our daddy and mama. So, no, 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 it don't work like that. You are what you are. You was that woman and that's all was there. I don't care how much you try to be daddy, you still that feminine female part and, 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 that, and that never registered with none of the guys, with, no, with the women, with the boys or the girls and stuff. So regardless, the family was incomplete. And that's what it's saying, that that father need to be there. Why do you think they structured to make sure that they can get that man out of the house? Hmm. That they would give you um, certain benefits and stuff if that man out of the house. So they had a, they had a plan. Mm -hmm. They had a plan. And it dealt with the family circle. You know, because a family, you got a family on your hand. You got five fingers. By themselves, they're breakable. But when they come together and they ball themselves up, they become a mighty and powerful fist. A family that can't be broken and stuff. So these are the examples that you got to be able to be able to um, to do and project and execute what Yahuwah will have you to do. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's go on. Let's finish seeing what they're talking about. See, like I said, their father being there, you were, it'll be a rare thing to hear about, you know, delinquent children. It says, train up your child to respect the almighty Yahuwah. Number one. So he tells us to train up the child in the way that it should go. So when it's old, it won't depart. Mm -hmm. But if you don't instill nothing in them, that means they have an emptiness and they have something else that done been instilled in them. Because if you don't train them, somebody else is. It says, the the creator of the universe. It is impossible to overemphasize the importance of this single instruction. One might say that it is the cornerstone of good character. Let's go to Proverbs 22 and 6. Proverbs 22 and 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's what it's all about. Good training, good upbringing and stuff. You know, even, even when people are not in the word, they, at least some families have certain morals to teach them. You know, how to conduct themselves, how to carry themselves. You know, they show, they teach them young boys how to be men and young girls, how to be women, how to conduct themselves, how to dress themselves and all this. But the world don't got away from that and stuff. It, it, everything is is loosey-goosey. You know, um, it's, it's just no no more order and stuff. Oh, I'm not going to do that. My mom did this to me. I ain't going to do this to my child. My father did this to me. I ain't going to do all that, blah, 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 this and that. And then that's where it begins to to fall apart because it wasn't that bad especially if you don't turn out to be alright so why you ain't going to teach it to your children why you ain't going to bring them up in the right way 
But yet we see when you don't follow the orders and the instruction of you who ain't no cutting corner. You can't do like you're doing when you're putting a bicycle together or you're working on your car and say, oh, I don't need this part and throw it away. No, 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 no. Everything that you will have in his scriptures, in his sifa, in his Torah, we got to do it. This ain't the grocery store. We can't go shopping and grab what we want and leave the rest on the thing. No, 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 no. Everything got to be eaten. It says, teach your children the commandments of Yahuwah. You could hardly expect them to live upright lives if they do not know right from wrong. Simple as that. Simple as that. The basic stuff, the commandments, the Ten Commandments. It says, the commandments of the Most High define sin. They define sin. It just lets you see it. Remember what Shaul said? He said if it wasn't for the law, he wouldn't know sin. Mm. He said when he found out, when he knew the law and found out about the law, he what? He died. Sin came alive. Mm. He saw himself. It was a reflection of himself. In other words, the Torah, the scriptures, the Sefer, is a mirror unto yourself, unto each individual. It says, you could hardly expect them to live upright, you know, not you know, not knowing right from wrong if you don't teach them this. So it says the commandments of the most high define sin. They state in the plan in the plan in the plain and they state in the plain in simple term that sin is and what righteousness is. The children must be taught to recognize the difference. The Ten Commandments are recorded in scriptures in Shemuk chapter 20 and explained in great depth in Matthew, Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. New Testament only people. Spend a few minutes each day reading these and other portions of the scripture to your family a numerous benefits will be the result. Children must be taught the Ten Commandments without being cruel or to serve, chasten, smack, you know. Huh? Too severe. Huh? Too severe. Oh, too severe, chasten, or naughty, or naughty child. The set apart scriptures come out strongly in favor of of corporal punishment when it is deserved. When it's deserved. That's why you say it's better rod, you spoil a child. Mm -hmm. say, if a child persists in doing what it has been told not to do, it should be physically punished. Simple as that. Whether you agree with it or not, it's the word of the most high you will. But if you believe in just putting your child on time out, keep it up. Keep doing it and see what happens in the long run. It says the family or society which rejects your whole instruction in this vital matter of punishing a wayward child will certainly suffer the consequences. When those same children grow up. That's right. It's so true. That's why some of the parents are afraid of their children right now today. Because they wouldn't do what they needed to do to correct them. Now the children are running the house. Got the parents locked up in the room. Got them on punishment. Scared mm -hmm. to come out their own room. Or scared to go in the children's room and stuff. Because the children tell them, hey, not, don't come in my room unless I your room. You don't pay no rent. So if y'all got children like that, y'all better y'all better jump on. Y'all better do something about it. All right. Proverbs 3. The third chapter of Proverbs. All right, we have Proverbs, third chapter. We're going to read 11 and 12, 12 being the key verse. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of Yahuwah, neither spurn your, your, you his correction. For whom Yahuwah love, he corrects. Even as a father, the son in whom he delights. Mm -hmm. He corrects those who he likes. He yeah, said he that fights against correction is what? A bastard. Mm -hmm. 
So a bastard is not one born out of wedlock. A bastard is one that rejects chastisement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So y'all can get that out y'all category. I know that was something passed on from my grandparents and stuff about somebody being born out of wedlock as a bastard. No, 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 no. That ain't what the word says. The word says one is one that rejects chastisement. That's a bastard. <laughs> and while we're still in Proverbs, let's go to um, the 13th chapter of Proverbs. All right, there you go. It says in Proverbs 13 24, He that spares his rod hates his son. Now, why would it say that? You hate your son if you spare it. But we, I know growing up, you say, oh, but I remember growing up and you getting a whooping. They say, I beat you because I love you. But here it's showing you, he's showing you that hey, the reason why they say that because they say if he don't do it, they hate you. And why he says that they hate you because in other words, you're allowing your child to get in trouble, to be killed, to be hurt because you never gave him correction. You never correct him and teaching him right from wrong and stuff. So he become like a wild animal, a wild beast and stuff. So not to do it, that means you hate them because you're going to let them fall into some kind of trap, end up in jail or whatever it may be and stuff. So he says, he that spares his rod hates his, his son. But he that loves him chastens him diligently. So if you love him, that's why, the, you know, you had those parents back in those days beating you and saying, hey, I do this because I love you. Because they don't want to see you get in trouble. They want to keep you away from that and stuff. Shut your mouth. Shut up. Putting it on you, boy. Oh, yeah. Putting it on you. 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 When they when they beat you and talking to you, but that mean that whooping gonna go for a long time yes. and stuff. Uh huh. And then while they beating you and you crying, they telling you to be quiet before I give you something to cry for. Okay. And they already giving it to you. So I guess whatever it was gonna be worse than that. Huh? Give you some extra and stuff. So so. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Shut up, boy. You're so <laughs> yeah, I tell you, they had something for you. They had some words for you and stuff. Do they say here? Oh yeah. So we yeah. so we were just discussing the difference, you know, of the beatings that they get here in Ghana and the beatings in the states and stuff. He said they beat you. They don't talk to you. They just beat you and it's over with. It's quick, a quick, a quick, a quick um canyon. But in the states, you know, they they beat you and stuff. They talking. So if it, you might well put on that watch clock. And start timing it. <laughs> see, see who gonna break. See who gonna break, break the record. Cause them talking, them talking whoopings are the worst. <laughs> when you, you start crying before you get hit. Oh yeah. All right. So let's go to um, Hebrews. I bring the twelfth chapter, seventh verse. All right, y'all. So we got Hebrews, the twelfth chapter, seventh verse, being the key verse. We're gonna start at verse five. Okay, okay. Verse 5. Starting at the All right. Verse. So here we go. Hebrews 12. We're going to start at the fifth verse, 5 to 7. 7 being the key verse. And you have forgotten that exaltation which speaks to you like to the sun. My son, despise not chastising of Elohim, and do not faint when he rebukes you. For whom you who love, he chastens and scourges every son which he receives. If you suffer chastising, chastising or scourging, then you are like son. And he, I mean, and who now is a son who is not chastened? So if you go to the eighth verse, what I was telling y'all earlier, if you go to um, Hebrew, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, in the eighth verse, this is what I was telling you about when it's talking about the bastard. 
It says, and behold, if you are without chastisement, then you are not sons of Yahuwah, but bastards and not sons. That's how you're supposed to say it. The word is authority. Authority is knock somebody across the head, knock some sense into it, and knock the other sense out. <laughs> so y'all, so here you go right there. That's what the word say. That's what the bastard is. There's not one born out of wedlock. All right. The rap was slow. There you go. I deal without discipline and without chest ties. There you go. There it is. Now let's go to um, Zabarim, the eighth chapter. Zabarim, eighth chapter. All right. So here we go. Zabarim, do the running. Do the right thing. That do the running. <laughs> chapter eight. It shows up. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The word means what it said. Uh, uh, For real. <laughs> so chapter 8 in the 5th verse. It said, And you shall consider in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so Yahuwah, Elohim, chastens you. Yes. Yeah. Simple as that, y'all. Simple as that. Yeah. Do the right thing, you want to get chastened. Do the wrong thing, chest tired is waiting at the door. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's go back to Proverbs 19 chapter. Proverbs 19 chapter. All right, so we got Proverbs 19, 18, 19 chapter, 18 verse, and we got Proverbs 22nd chapter, 15 verse. So 18 verses of the 19th chapter. Chesting your son. For there is hope, but set not your heart on his destruction. So in other words, don't abuse that child. Don't kill that child in your beat. You can chest them without abusing them, without killing them and stuff. So he made that plain and simple too. See, people figure that you can't chest in the child. Oh, oh, you shouldn't do that, blah, blah, blah. blah. But yeah, he, he, he explains it plain and simple. Chest in the child. But set not your heart on his destruction. Don't beat him to kill him. You know, some people, when they beat him, some of the parents be beating at you. Oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You know, talking crazy and this and that. You know, they're angry, this and that. But the word tell us not to do that. In other words, the word is letting us know. Um, be acknowledged. Be aware of, you know, what you're doing. That's why I know some parents say, you know, I beat you when I calm down and stuff. I you know, wait till I get myself down before that happens. Because right now, if I beat you, I'm gonna hurt you. You know, so so it's, it's like that and stuff. So we see, even you who got just instructions, even to protect you in the midst of your chest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Proverbs the twenty second chapter. So that's twenty two fifteen. Miss you twenty two in the fifteen verse. Mm -hmm. It says Foolishness is bound up In the heart of a child So we, we are, You know so the word that you know That's why you see sometimes how these children be acting They be like hey what's wrong with you You acting like a fool <laughs> Hey what well, the word let us know Hey it's, 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 it's in a child That's why in another script you hear him say When I was a child I did childish things and stuff it's just normal. <laughs> it's normal, but that's where raising them up and training them and teaching them so when they get that dope, they won't be that foolish. But you go, some people go to childhood all the way to adulthood and still acting like a fool. <laughs> no home training. That's when you ask them as a grown person, well, who raised you? You were raised by a wild pack of animals? <laughs> yeah, and, and, that, and that's how it be. That's how it be. So that, that's, that's just the amazing thing of it. He says, foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, you ain't getting away. Say, okay, don't worry about it. I'm going to beat that foolishness out of you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh huh. See, see, they don't realize that when, when you go to when you when they start to whipping on you and getting that food, guess what? Foodin is gonna leave. Foodin say, hey boy, I don't know, I don't know why you cut up like that, but I'm out of here. I'm going to find me another body. I'm gone. <laughs> you can have this. <laughs> be, hey, beat you so good, foolishness just get straight. <laughs> foolishness, hey, foolishness just start saying, hey, I ain't gonna act like that no more. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> it says, do not provoke her, do not provoke, harass, or discourage your children, but treat them with the respect. That is their due. Mm -hmm. So, so it go. That's why I tell people respect go both ways, mm -hmm. and respect they ain't given. It's earned. Some people think they put automatic get respect because they're a chief or they're a president or they're a governor. No, 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 no. Respect goes both ways, mm -hmm. and they got to be earned. You just ain't giving it out. Mm -hmm. I say you who give what he gives that what unmerited favor. He gives that. But hey, you you gotta earn this. <laughs> oh, no. So let's read it again. Do not provoke, harass, or discourage your child, but treat them with the respect that is their due. That is their due. They're like the scriptures say, honor your father and your mother. But you hood, hey, but don't ride, don't run with it now. Because he said, hey, now nah, let's let's nah, go back the other way. Hey, do not provoke your child. Mm -hmm. So don't think because you're the parent, you could just, you know, do what you bid and bag enough to do. Because you got to remember, the children are a gift to you from you hood. So now you're going you gonna, to um, just destroy his gift that he gave you? You're going to abuse it? You're going to misuse it? Come on, see, people don't be thinking about that. The children are a gift unto you from your whore. The, parent, the children have to honor their parent, and the parent pretty much got to honor the children because he tell them, hey, don't provoke them. Because you whore let you know, hey, you provoke them, you're going to get what's coming to you. <laughs> so even across the plane, it ain't one-sided. You whore got this thing, hey, it's mapped out to the team. That's why I say there's no loophole. When it comes to his laws, his statutes, his judgment, or, no, or his instructions or commands that he given up. He cover, you who got all the bases covered for everybody, for man, woman, child, animal, the plant, the earth, the agriculture. He got everything, how it should be taken care of, how it should be treated, and how it should be done, even to the stranger. Hmm. So ain't no way of getting around this, y'all. All right, where we at now? Oh, hold on. So, so we see, now we're going to go read out of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, y'all. Let's go to Ephesians 6th chapter. All right, y'all. Ephesians, the 6th chapter, the 4th verse, being our key verse, but we're going to start at verse 1. Children, obey your parents and our master. For this is right. And this is the first commandment that has promise. The first commandment with promise. Honor your father and your mother, that it may be well for you in your life, may be long upon the earth. So that right there gives you a long life when you honor them. In other words, don't disrespect them. Now, for a verse, y'all, well, a lot of them don't like, a lot of parents don't like to um, go into that. They want to keep it one sided, but you will cover all bases. Parents, do not provoke your children to anger, but rear them in the instruction and in the teaching of our master, of our Don. So back to what you were saying, instructing them in the ways of his commandments. All right. It said, set a good example for after for after all is said and done, the esteem, the glory of children is their father. 
Proverbs 17 and 6. 17 and 6, Proverbs. Another beautiful one. All right. Proverbs 17 and 6. It says, Children's children are the crown of old men. That's them grandchildren. In the sting, the glory of children are their fathers. And it's true. And it's true. I, I don't know. You were instilling me from the day I was born, before I was born, that I always loved children and stuff. But just reading the word, now you start to really see it in the connection of it all and stuff. He says, children's children, which is the grandchildren, are the crown of the old man. Because now you, you see it. Your seed producing that seed, and it's like, wow, it's flourishing. It's like you done planted a flower or, or some vegetables and stuff, and then it, you see it bloom. And then guess what? You can get some seeds out of there, and you start to get some more, and then some more bloom. And next thing you know, boom, 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 you got a whole big garden and stuff. And you be like, wow, you know, just so amazing. But here, we see, we see it right here. He says, the crown of old men. In the glory of children, of children are their fathers. Man, that's a beautiful, and this is, it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing to experience it, to live it, and to have it. It says, imitate the most high, for he, for it, for is he not the husband of the church? And father of us all, the wife, mother. So that will be that that will be our next one, y'all. The next Shabbat. Hallelujah. We'll be doing verse eight, you will willing. So that's just to give you um the move, you know, moving on to the next thing dealing with the um with the um with the wife. But just showing you it was a perfect thing with the men, with the father, with the husband. You know, it says, imitate the most high. For he is not the, for is he not the husband of the church, of the assembly, the word, and father of us all. So, you who are willing, next Shabbat, we'll be moving on. The wife, Isha, the mother, Ima. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. really? oh, I so, so y'all bring your fork and knife, cut into that that bread and meat next Shabbat. So we we'll have a time, Shabbat Shalom, and y'all continue to have a beautiful Shabbat and continue to meditate on this delicious, delicious word.